Victor Vroom's expectancy theory is a highly successful model that really does help us to understand motivation. But Lyman Porter and Edward Lawler discovered that for them, it doesn't fully explain all the relationships among the effort we put in, the performance we achieve, and the satisfaction that we feel. So in response, they developed their own model. Porter and Lawler's expectancy model is a lot more complex than Victor Vroom's. A lot more. However, if you put in the work to understand how it operates in its basic form, it will repay you with some valuable insights. So we're going to look at Porter and Lawler's expectancy model in this video. The first thing to note is that in their research, Porter and Lawler failed to find a direct cause and effect relationship between the motivational effort that we put in and the job satisfaction that we feel. Rather, they found a far more complex set of interrelationships among that effort, abilities and traits, the way that we perceive our role and the performance that we get. They all contribute to one another in some massive feedback loop. Their second major insight was that job satisfaction is more dependent upon performance. That is to say that in many motivational models, we find that performance is linked to job satisfaction. What Porter and Lawler found was that job satisfaction is linked to performance. But once again, there is a complex feedback relationship that means that they both reinforce one another. All this and more led them to craft the complex set of interactions and feedbacks that are illustrated in this diagram. In this diagram, what Porter and Lawler show as the perceived effort reward probability is similar to Vroom's idea of instrumentality. What instrumentality means is that if we are able to achieve the performance goals that are set for us, that a performance level will be instrumental in achieving the rewards that are promised. Vroom's idea of expectancy was the extent to which we expect that if we put in the work, we will get the results or the performance that we hope for. And in Porter and Lawler's model, this expectancy arises from our perceptions of our abilities and from our traits and how these relate to the way that we interpret our immediate role. As you might expect, Vroom's valence is here too, and it's the perceived value of the rewards that we're going to get, both the intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. Intrinsic rewards being those rewards that we feel in ourselves, satisfaction, pleasure, pride, knowledge that we're developing, the ability to take more control over our work. They're all intrinsic rewards. Extrinsic rewards come from outside of us. They are the thanks, the recognition, the praise, and the monetary rewards that we get for doing a good job. We can see that our satisfaction arises from both the rewards we receive from our performance and from our perception of how fair those rewards are. And of course, this satisfaction then feeds into the effort that we are motivated to apply. This model feels right. And Porter and Lawler also gathered a lot of evidence to support it. But it is complex, arguably much too complex for managers to use day to day. I could also argue that the extreme complexity of all of the feedbacks and interactions makes it almost impossible to test completely and to satisfy ourselves rigorously that it absolutely stands up to empirical testing. It's also true that Porter and Lawler took no account of what we might call negative motivations like coercion or feelings of job insecurity. 
But their model is useful because it tells us a number of valuable and important things. First, it shows us that managers are wise if they invest in training and guiding and developing workers to build up their confidence in their own abilities and capacity. Secondly, if rewards are to be effective, they must link directly and transparently to the performance of the individual. Thirdly, performance evaluations also need to be equally direct, equally transparent and scrupulously fair. Fourth, as if we didn't know it, motivation can be achieved through a balance of intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. However, number five, rewards will only be motivating to the extent that they are perceived as being fair in the context of the performance that the worker has achieved. And finally, you must set fair and precise role expectations and performance goals. There's a lot in Porter and Lawler's version of expectancy theory. It's a lot more complex than the Vroom model and therefore arguably nowhere near as useful. But for the student of motivation in the workplace, it provides additional insights and a genuine sense of the complexity of trying to motivate a range of different people in a number of different contexts. As a result, if you're serious about understanding motivation, do examine Porter and Lawler's model carefully. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video, and in the meantime, keep learning.